early in the morning and everyone is already like you know, um, very much keyed up, that's beautiful. Uh, my name is Niels, I'm the Global Brand Ambassador for Jägermeister and uh, what we want to do today is obviously like you know, introduce the versatile taste profile of um, Jägermeister and kind of like that to use that, I'm like you now gonna give out some drinks. What I always need is like you know some interaction, like you know give, kind of more or less like you know a call and response, right? I'm kind of like you know, giving you a drink, and you just like you know you are supposed to find specific flavors because obviously there are two reasons for Jägermeister to kind of like you now introduce um, Jägermeister as an ingredient for cocktails. One is pretty simple; it is for a different consumer experience right that basically means like now that was just straight like in a marketing talk consumer experience but obviously when we do have a shot right it's gone right and then comes the most amazing thing thing like now the flavor profile of Jägermeister actually leaves you with a very like you know, pleasant clean palette right so you're open for the suggestion like five minutes later what about the next shot and you go like yeah sure why not right and so it goes on and on and on and you might regret that the next day but during the evening it feels just fine but there's always like you know some people in the group which do have to work the next day or are more responsible than others or just have a different attitude or kids at home or whatever and to just go like next shot next shot next shot so just like now it doesn't feel right so if you have just a different glassware and it might be just like you know simple long drink or a cocktail it takes longer right so you should still be part of the group, but you're not excluded because you're not drinking, right? So that is one of the reasons why kind of like that comes in, in like you know, very handy. The other thing is for me, and that's kind of like the most interesting aspect, and that is like I use Jägermeister in two ways, kind of like you know, to incorporate it into drinks. One is kind of like pretty simple. I use it as a modifier, right? In terms of like you know a cocktail architecture or structure, it's pretty simple. You always have an alcoholic base, you have an additive, and then you have a modifier which kind of like you now push or like you now brings out specific flavors or just like incorporates everything perfectly. That usually is a cocktail bitter. Obviously, Jägermeister is basically, or like now the base of Jägermeister, the elixir, is like the most complex and intense cocktail bitter. The only thing, obviously, since cocktail bitters are not meant to be consumed, right? They're non-potable because they are far too bitter. It's one of the reasons why you actually kids and why during prohibition it still was possible to actually buy Angostura, right, or Peugeot because it was considered like a medicine, right, and too bitter to actually drink straight away. It's just like something interesting to keep in mind, like now how it actually comes to these things. So Jägermeister obviously has this elixir, this very intense base, just some more water, alcohol, and sugar, and some caramel, and that's it. So you can use it as a cocktail bitter, or the same way, just obviously in different quantities, right? So basically, you can use Jägermeister in any classic drink. Any kind of like, you know, old fashioned, hanky panky, Manhattan, Negroni, you name it, right? It always works. It's just like, you know, a different thinking, different approach. That's one way. The other way, that's kind of like now where we kind of like now trying to focus on, is obviously that we want to bring out or suppress specific flavors. Right? That will entail like you know how temperature affects taste and the kind of like now is the idea of it. But before we start, I kinda of like now um gonna hand out that means like you now my beautiful assistant Inesh and Kateo um like you now are obviously handing out some um aroma advisors. 
Uh, you've got to give, like now, specifically Inesh, a very big round of applause because yesterday she recognized the danger of drinking Jägermeister <laughs> in, like, you know, this pace, right? <laughs> So I'd probably just start introducing it, like you know, since most of you already have it. Um, obviously, this aroma advisor is pretty simple, um, kind of like a pretty similar, um, like any wine, whiskey, or coffee wheel, you know, right? And kind of like now, the idea behind all these tools is pretty simple. It's meant to kind of like now help you to understand the product better, right? And kind of like learn about the depths in terms of like you know taste and how it works. So what we did is kind of like you now was at that time very much revolutionary and it still is like you now mostly unheard of because when you have a wine wheel it sometimes feel like you know like poetry, right? You read about all these amazing things you're supposed to taste and which come from whatever, right? And sometimes it's pretty hard to follow up with it because it's just like you now it's too abstract. So what we did is pretty simple. We have defined the head note, the main kind of like you now taste profiles you get with Jägermeister. So we're starting with um, sweet, and we have the earthy, um, spicy notes, picante terrosa, and then we have. You're laughing. That was my attempt of being like, you know, speaking like a Portuguese, right? So don't laugh at me, please. That was a serious attempt, right? I'm trying to like, you know, I'm not claiming to be Portuguese, but I try to speak like, right? So don't laugh, right? So then we have, um, obviously, herbal aromatic, and we do have amarga, obviously bitter, right? How was that? Much better? Be honest, come on. <laughs> It's amargo. All right, good. So we, we got it. We, the mistake is in here. It wasn't mine. So we got um, the aromatic um, citrusy notes, right? Fruity, citrusy, aromatic notes. And the big difference is when you have something like a herbal liquor and you taste something. There actually is a reason for it, because all herbal liquor are using the same massive base, maceration. That is a process where you actually have alcohol and you have character giving ingredients like canela or cardamomo, like you know, these things. And then you're actually taking out what you want, volatile and soluble, right? Like these things are getting into the alcohol and then later on in the product, obviously. So the thing is, we actually wrote down what is responsible for your, kind of like now, that you perceive it as sweet, right? So it would be with Jägermeister, for example, star anise or cinnamon. I'm not saying canela because then you smile again, right? And then we have, um, obviously, um, licorice, right? So kind of like now, these ingredients are very sweet in and on themselves. They're kind of like now, they're already having like a very potent sweetness to it. Right? Obviously, you do have sugar. When you drink Jägermeister, you have it tip of your tongue, you get a peak of sweetness, sugar. But then it becomes kind of like now longer evolving, that's licorice, right? So, there's one thing I want to kind of like now point out and like really bring into your mind. Obviously, canela, right? Some people would say, I don't consider canela as just like now sweet. I do consider it as herbal aromatic. Right? And that's true. And then, once again, 
There are even like, you know, specific regions, and that shows you how important taste is and how, like, you know, multifaceted taste can be, right? Taste is never one dimensional, specifically not when we're talking about herbal ingredients, right? So the one, like, you know, culture, like, for example, Germany, right? We do have Apfelstrudel, so everyone sees it like, you know, all right, yes. All the bakeries during, like, you know, Christmas, cinnamon, right? Canela is always sweet, right? They go into Greece, for example, and on their milk coffee, always like spotted with cinnamon to make it even softer, multifaceted and sweet. When we're talking about like regions like Asia, no one perceives cinnamon as sweet. It's always spicy. Why is that? Due to these like you now red band Rickley experiment like you now kind of cinnamon with whatever chili or no? It's just because cinnamon is used as a base for curries. It's always like, you know, everyone uses cinnamon more or less to kind of like, you know, incorporate the different, like, you know, spiciness and other, like, you know, ingredients. So it's always a base for something savory and spicy. So your taste and how you perceive things is, on one hand, just individual, how sensitive you are, right? And on the other, how trained you've been by your cultural surroundings, like your grandma cooked, baked, whatever, and like, you know, how whatever just like inspired you when you've been young and exploring, right? Like early travels, these things. That kind of like, you know, lends to your experience in tasting, right? And all this tasting and all this talking about taste is so important because if we don't find words for it, the experience never happened. You might have a physical reaction like, I do like it or I don't. But if you don't find words for it, it was never there. All right? And that is for you as professional bartenders, like executing recipes, the most important lesson. If you can't describe what you're making, you can't deal with any reaction or complaint. Right? Or kind of figuring out, all right, good. So this lady just turned 18 and you served her like you know, a Negroni and she didn't like it. Doesn't mean that your Negroni was badly executed. It didn't do it right. It was just that you didn't figure how she perceives taste. So you couldn't deal with her complaint, right? And that's what we need to understand. Right? When you can't talk about taste, you can't execute recipes. You're just reproducing. But by creating, you need to find more words to it. Because otherwise, just something happened to yourself. But you don't know how it happened. Right? So, more or less, as a tool to kind of like now introduce multifaceted flavor profiles, like now in Jägermeister, to the bartenders. So, we have the head notes. And then we actually tell you what is responsible for this, right? And to make it more interestingly, kind of like you know, more engaging, we're actually having the outer rings, which are alcoholic and non-alcoholic components, which are supposedly, like you know, helping you, or hopefully, kind of like you know, to come up with new interpretations to enhance or suppress specific flavors in Jägermeister. Right? And that is not like you no know, dogmatic and it's not meant to be perfect. And I'm not claiming that it is. Because what I want is kind of like you, know, you to start thinking about it. Alright? If I would say this is just like how you do it, that would be like giving you a recipe and you just like you know either liking it or not. But it wouldn't engage you. And what Jägermeister wanted with this is engaging you, right? Bringing you into it to understand taste better. You got a question? Are you, are you just looking at your watch? Are you bored? Seriously, this guy in the second row is already bored. Oh, I'm devastated. It's all right. Um, so, kind of like now to give you like you know, a background to what we did here, and then I want to like you know, start like you know, some tasting of the herbs and spice, and then we get some drinks. 
When I started working with Jägermeister, you've got to keep that in mind, it was in 2010, right? And at that time, I already had my own bar for 12 years. And in my own bar, which is only like 38 square meters, roughly, right? I already had like, you know, 650 drinks, uh, spirits. So I was used to like, you know, yeah, I'm looking for almost like the most exotic. So what I'm talking about, I started having my own bar way before the internet actually became a popular tool for information and actually getting unique spirits. I was relying on people going to places and bringing it back, right? I'm working now as a bartender for more than 25 years and at that time when I started interacting with Jägermeister, I figured myself, hey come on, seriously, I've been a barista, I've been like, you know, crowned many times, I was just like, you know, I knew everything about taste. I was fucking on top of the game, right? And I started working with Jägermeister and what I realized, and it was the most humbling experience, I knew nothing. Not about taste, but nothing about this particular kind of taste, like herbs, the multifacets, how it interacts, how you can bring something out. And it made me so more acute and more sensitive to tasting. It was actually, for me, the best thing ever, right? So now I know when I'm working with Jägermeister, I'm not just working with one product. I'm working with 56 ingredients, right? Loads of aroma. And that is the most inspiring way to actually work with it and to understand taste. So now I need two or three volunteers. Um, bad news is you've got to taste something and it might not be really pleasant. <laughs> Good news is you can expose your knowledge to everyone here in the audience, right? Because obviously you need to talk about it. So who is a volunteer? You have a volunteer coming over. So we need some more. Can stay here. Yeah. What's your name? Louis, by the way. Louis. And Louis. Niels. Nice to meet you. And you are? Louis. Well, All right, good. So everyone in the, like, you know, Faro is called, like, you know, they don't want to, you know, open up totally. So they supposedly are all called Louis, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's the same like in Germany. Everyone is Peter, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> right, good. So um, what I need you to do is, like, you know, uh, we have one ingredient here. It doesn't look like much, right? Can you see that? It's just like almost non-existent, right? Good. So what I want you to do is chew on it, and then just like you know, look at the audience. Is there anything happening in their face? Do they look pleased? Keep on chewing. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like, you know, weird, right? Good. So what just happened? What is it? Do you know what you just had? Gentian. You're very good. <laughs> Seriously. It's not Gentian. This here is, I mean, I'm part of the Gentian family. That's called Chiretta, and it's only like you know harvested and like you know sourced in one little part of the world. This is Bhutan. It's just like a landlocked somewhere in the Himalaya, right? So that's part of the Jensen family. Very good. So it was bitter, obviously, right? What kind of bitterness? Could you describe what kind of bitterness? I mean, obviously, it's pretty difficult. If you just say bitter, it's just like everyone has his own perception of bitter. That's the reason why you need to describe it a bit better. Um, it's much smoother than most of bitters. Uh, Smooth, all right, good. Well, it's some kind of bitter that's not really acidic, but I wasn't expecting this from a, uh, a wooden. It, it kind of like looks very grassy, and at the beginning yeah. it was grassy. Yeah. And I, so it, it uh, came quite rather smooth, not So it's kind of like very pinpointing in your mouth, right? It's kind of like you know, just one area where it actually happens. So that is like you know, a very interesting thing. Are you uncomfortable with it? All right, good. You're good. You like that. All right, good. So actually, for me, it is. You later on, when we didn't, you know, done with it, like you know, whoever's interested, you can give it a try. It is one of the most crystal clear expressions of bitter. It's really like bang on, right? Sometimes we perceive bitter like now when you have vegetables or meat or like coffee, which is kind of like now always accumulating. You're trying to get rid of it, right? This is totally different. It's really like. Bang on. Bitter. 
<laughs> That's it, right? And it's so clearly defined. It's beautiful. Good. So I kind of like, you know, want you to do one thing. Like, you know, you're trusting me right now, right? So he takes this, kind of like, you know, again, it looks kind of grassy. Do you can identify it already? Otherwise, just like, you know, give it a, it smells like Jägermeister. Oh, very good. Otherwise, you just give it a, you know, shoeing on it it's, again. What happened? Sweet. Good. But not like straight away sweet like sugar. No. It's more... Um, I know it's pretty hard. So don't, like, I know it's pretty awkward, like, you know, shooing in front of everyone and then trying to describe something, right? So Lewis and Lewis are doing an awesome job, right? <laughs> so, so I still don't know who you are, but Lewis and Lewis are doing an awesome job. <laughs> it could be a show, right, somewhere, like, you know, Lewis and Lewis, yes. So the sweetness. Yeah, but uh, so the topic has a uh, difference is a little bit more... Uh, it's kind of building up, right? That is an accumulating sweetness. It's kind of like you know, building up like here. That is what I have when you drink Jägermeister. That is licorice. Say again? What, what this is? This, uh, licorice, it's like a, it's a root, right? It's a root, which is actually, and that's the most amazing thing, just to keep that in mind, all the ingredients, when you're talking about whiskey, when you're talking about, even when you're just talking about tequila, like, you know, obviously, there's always one harvest, right? And there's always, like, you know, one specific time of it, right? So usually, when we're talking about grain, it's just, like, once a year, all right? Good. Well, we're talking about the ingredients of Jägermeister. We have a neutral alcohol base, and then we have ingredients. Some do take about nine to 12 months to kind of like, you know, grow and then being harvested. Sweet wood, like you know, licorice, actually takes sometimes up to 20 years before we harvest, right? So it's kind of like, now that is amazing. We have four continents where we source our ingredients, more than 40 countries, and it's just like now we always need it, like now at one time. All different places. But the nice thing, when we're talk, talking about like now how the licorice worked right now, kind of like now was kind of soft sweetness building up, what happened to the bitterness? It's smoother. Like, you know, you balanced it, right? So the bitter before, if you chew on that one, the bitterness stays on forever and ever and ever. You could count it with like just something sweet or with some salt, all right? So that's it. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Big round of applause for Lewis and Lewis. And now for something more pleasant. I need once again some volunteers. Let's say two. Two or three volunteers who wants to volunteer. Are there any more Lewis and Lewis here? All right, good. we got one guy coming up. Good. Who else wants to volunteer? There's another volunteer coming up. You're not volunteering. Seriously. So I need one more volunteer. Come on. Yeah, now we're talking. The men are so... Können wir danach machen, oder? Können die nach vorne kommen, ne? Ja. Aber können wir auch rumgeben, ja. All right, good. So you kind of like now are forced to talk about this. And then we just like now pass it over. So obviously what we got here... Clothes, right. So what is a clove? Well, you look at it, it's pretty kind of like a small little thing. Anyone knows what it is? What is clove? A seed. A seed? Uh, no. It's like a dried plant. Boom. It's like a dried flower. Actually, this is like the top. That would be what's blossoming, right? And what we obviously do when we talk about clove, it is like a petal, right? Like a rose petal, but that is not a rose here, that's obviously clove. So what we do is we nip it off and then we dry it. And what I want you to do is just shoe on the petal, right? Like the very top. Shoe on it and tell me what happens. It's very aromatic, very intense. What happens? 
fresh sensation. You got a fresh sensation plus. Boom, spot on. It numbs the mouse. So it actually is antiseptic and it's kind of like now numbing your sensation. It's kind of like now, that is what we still use by a dentist, right? If you got a toothache, that helps. It's taking away pain, it numbs and it cleans, right? Obviously very intense. It was very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we got one more, you can give it to me, yes. What is the time? Quarter past. <laughs> We're still good. We got one more coming up for you. Um, obviously, everyone knows cardamomo, right? Yeah. Good. So there you go. And if you just like, you know, press it on some, like, you know, some hard surface, then you come to the little seed, right? And you shoot on that, and you're gonna describe it for me again. So what's your name, by the way? Luis. Luis. <laughs> Fuck you. What's your name? Luis. No. No. Yes, yeah, these four guys claiming to be Luis. Like now, we need the police. It's just like now. It's some like now. Are you trying to kid me? Come on. Seriously. Luis and Luis. So we do a comedy show right there. Luis and Luis. Yeah. All right, good. Big round of applause for Lewis and Lewis, right? <laughs> Thanks. So, what does it taste like? Caramomo. So it has a kind of cleansing uh, effect, right? Cool sensation. Yeah. Cool. So got, first you got this kind of citrusy notes, right? And then comes this kind of almost like eucalyptus manso, right? Kind of like a cooling sensory. And it's like already good. Seriously, that's good. Though you are not called Lewis, I'm pretty sure about that. Um, so what you just described, and that once again is to impress on you that taste, working with herbs and spice, is never just one thing. It's not just like sweet. It's never just like, you know, kind of, yes, this is like fresh. No. You get different freshness to it. You got this kind of like, you no know, limey note, like, you no know, like from limon, like, you no know, kind of like, you know, this is one kind of freshness, and then you have this kind of cooling effect, right? So it's just like multifaceted. It's perfect. Thank you. That was very good. So, thanks to Luis and Luis, and I'm gonna go for like, you know, the first drink. So, thank you, really. Um, we're starting with the first drink. Yeah, big round of applause, Luis and Luis. So, whoever comes up next and is called Luis, I'm, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> All right, good. So the first drink coming up is kind of like you know, uh, a very beautiful, simple variation of a um, gimlet. And it is featured in a book by Raymond Chandler. Anyone knows Raymond Chandler? It's king of Pulp Fiction. If you ever need literature, go for Ian Fleming and Raymond Chandler. Because it's always like, you know, obviously, suspense and like, you know, I mean, kind of like a hero, you know, kind of like you now getting into with some lovely lady, whatever. Just like, you know, that is James Bond, basically, right? So, but Ian Fleming, if you read him, right, that is always about food and drinks. The books are much better than the films, right? The same with Raymond Chandler. All the Raymond Chandler books were made into films with like guys like Humphrey Bogart, right? But that's not cool. Cool as books, because it's always about drinks. Day drinking, each and every time, right? Everything, good. So, Raymond Chandler, in one book, he is giving one particular drink to his hero, a gimlet. A very simple variation. In today's time, everyone goes for a gimlet, always like, you know, with obviously juice, 
and then like you know some um, sugar and gin, right? That kind of like, is a classic variation. The downside, gimlet actually means kind of like crystal clear, right? When you have like a top surface like an office C where you can look through, like you know, to the ground, that's gimlet, right? So that's the reason why we talk about in literature about gimlet eyes when you look through and you can't see anything but you can still look through, right? Gimlet, so that's gimlet. So if you use juice and sugar, obviously you don't have that. If you use, and that is the nice thing about this book, Raymond Chandler actually specifies not the gin, but he specifies the rose's lime juice. So we're talking about a lime juice cordial, right? The gin, go for any brand. And then what we do, obviously, is kind of like a little twist to it, because um, I want you to, like, you know, when you get a glass, like, you know, not everyone gets one, but, like, you know, just the people who have a glass, I want you to taste it and just go looking for one particular flower. Right? Not about herbs, it's not about spice. If you identify, yeah, I, I do have loads of juniper, angelica, whatever. Yeah, that's cool. It's in there. But what I want you to identify is one particular flower, right? So good. All right. So the Marlowe's Gimlet variation featured first in a book called The Long Kiss Goodbye by Raymond Chandler. Beautiful. So I'm doing more than one drink, so don't worry about the amount of gin. Obviously, we go for some, as I said, lime juice cordial. There we go. And then comes the magic potion. We're going for some Jäger. And then, when you got the drink, I want you to focus on one particular flower. So you've seen it was just like you know, a couple of spoonful, right? It's not really a lot. And when I usually like you know, serve it, I never cool the glasses because I really want you to have like a you know, room temperature warm glasses to really open up the aroma, right? If you like, you, know, you would have the same effect if you have like you now frosted glasses, ice cold, perfect, yes. But then it would actually like you know, have a different timeline in terms of like you know, evolving, right? So that's the reason why I always go like you know, so that you have the instant like you know, kind of intriguing effect, even when you're not like you no know, that you're looking out for flowers, you definitely have it. That's a beauty, right? Good. So, who's a volunteer? Lewis. Right, good. So whoever is called Lewis, come on over. So, oh, we got more Lewis. Yeah, come on over. So whoever is Lewis, come on over. Yeah, yeah, you can volunteer, come on over. Otherwise, you don't get a drink. I mean, that's the good news, right? So ever volunteers gets a drink. I mean, that's perfect, isn't it? So you're called Lewis as well, right? I'm Michael. Oh, you're not even Portuguese. <laughs> Hey, Lewis. <laughs> I mean, seriously. Yeah. I never had something like this. It's just like, you know, that's the best running gag ever. Like, you know. Between us, you can see the difference. I mean, was there a rehearsal when I wasn't here? I have no idea. It's kind of like, you know, it feels like it. All right, good. So we got for Lewis, Michael. You're Michael, right? <laughs> Please. Let it be a Michael. <laughs> yes, Lewis, there you go. All right, good. So, just like you, know, you smell it, if you can figure out what flower, usually in the taste profile it's even stronger, right? You take a zip looking for one particular flower. And taste, it's really more intense. It's a guy from Jinzul. 
In the back. Come on over. Come on over. So we're looking for one particular flower. Um, if you don't have the English word, just say it in Portuguese. I got a guy in front who knows like now Portuguese and English. And he's not named Lewis. <laughs> You're gonna, you're gonna get this glass because it's just like nice beautiful. Nice to meet you, Louis. Oh yeah, I love that. I love that. <laughs> no, you, your name is Jean Zul. I've seen that. <laughs> so you, you have a ta na name tag kind of like that because you're always forgetting what your name is, right? <laughs> your name is not Louis, right? <laughs> All right, good. So next time I wear a shirt, not Louis, right? It's, it's, it's nothing personal, right? But please let there be someone like no Carlos, whatever, Pedro. <laughs> All right, good. We're looking for one particular flower. Say again? Yeah. That usually comes like second, like you know, like, like what people think about it. We're looking for one particular flower. It's pretty easy. Once I'm telling you what flower, everyone goes like, oh yeah. <laughs> exactly. It usually like it always happens. I mean, that's something really you have to keep in mind. Obviously, taste is very abstract, right? And when we're talking about jägermeister, so you usually don't talk about like flowers, right? We just talked about herbs and spices. We never talked about flowers. One particular flower. Michael. Yes. All the Lewis can go home. Michael <laughs> saved the day. Michael has superpowers. He is a fucking hero. I tell you what is so amazing about this drink, right? And this lavender, right? In here, we got a beautiful gin, eight ingredients. None of them. None of them is lavender. Oh. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be so exciting to get it in, right? Because it's already in the gin, right? So I figured that's the reason why I picked the gin Zul guy, because he should recognize the lavender. But Michael saved today. Right, so we got some lime juice cordial. Obviously, it's a lime juice concentrate, some caramel, some sugar. No lavender. Now we're coming to the most beautiful part. Obviously, 56 ingredients. None of them is lavender? A one of it. Ah. That's a surprise. A one of it, lavender. And you usually never have it. That's for a reason. Because when you take 56 ingredients and have a unique process of extracting and harmonizing the product, right? Then it's not about showcasing one particular ingredient. It's about the balance, it's about the harmony, right? So that is what actually makes a perfect recipe. So when you're looking at bartenders, everyone like, you know, knows the name of the bar you're meeting and you're going to. And you know the name of the head bartender, the main players. Never knows the name of the bar back. And you don't have to. But you would surely feel it when he's missing. It's the same with, do we need all 56 ingredients? Yes, we do. And it's not because we need, like, you know, to recognize them, but you will feel it. Even if you couldn't describe what's missing, but you will feel it, that it's missing, right? That's what I mean with enhancing flavors. Now, I know it's magic, so thank you. Thank you, Louis, Louis, Michael, Mr. Jim Zill. <laughs> you can take the glasses. You've got won a prize. You've got a drink. If you like it. If you, if you don't, just let me know, right? Good. So we're coming to the next drink. I am the most punctual guy in today's session so far. Yeah. I'm top of my game right now. I'm just like, you know, so fucking punctual. And by the way, like, you know, every Lewis has his Patricia. Patricia is my boss. Big round of applause for my boss, right? A big round of applause, yeah! She's like the time cake guy here. Like, you know, that's fucking amazing. Now we got a plane to catch. All right, good. So the next drink coming up is a kind of like now, as I introduced, like you know, how we can incorporate Jägermeister into drinks. I said you can use it as a modifier in every 
kind of a classic drink, like an old fashioned or Negroni or whatever. So I have a very beautiful drink called the Count Must, which is obviously a take on a Negroni. It's just gin, sweet vermouth, and instead of the Campari, which I dearly love, um, instead of the Campari, we just change this to the Jägermeister, right? So that's just like you know, a classic aperitivo. One thing, if you like, you know, talk to people about Jägermeister, you usually hear it's like, you know, oh, it's very sweet, right? So what do you reckon? What is sweeter, Campari or Jägermeister? Just raise your hand. Who's in favor of Jägermeister? What is sweeter? What is it like now, Campari? Who's undecided? Now you should raise your hand. Come on, at least participate, right? All right, good. So this Campari, obviously, has 300 grams of sugar per liter. Jägermeister, 135. So it's definitely not sweet. But then, again, and that's something you have always to keep in mind, the balance of Campari needs the sweetness. Otherwise, the bitterness would exceed everything, right? It would just be unbearable bitter. So that's why it's kind of so sweet. And that's the reason why you can actually prepare a Negroni, stir it like in the glass, in the gas glass, building glass, right? You already use your eyes because you need the dilution. Right? So since Jägermeister is less sweet, I can't use the dilution. So I'm preparing it differently. I'm just gonna like you know stir it up and then I like you know just serve it in like you know a guest glass, which is again room temperature warm without ice. Because I once again want to kind of like, you know let you participate in these kind of like you know more floral fragrances, like you know, you got some chamomile, then you have all the herbs and spice, much more dynamic, right? So we're gonna end up with a less sweet but more accessible drink. That's the idea. And once again, I do need some volunteers slash Luis, whoever, right? Um, whatever your name is, you're more than welcome, right? I once again need some volunteers, and what you need to do, and that is the most interesting thing, it really shows, showcase like in a very beautiful way the versatility of the taste profile. You take a zip, when I just give you the drink, and you look out for sweetness and bitterness, right? If you can identify specific flavors and aroma, yeah, perfect. But you're just looking for sweetness and bitterness. And then you're gonna get a squeeze like an, of a lemon peel, right? Just over the surface. And then you take another zip, and once again, you're looking out for sweetness and bitterness, right? So who is a Lewis? No more Lewis left. So whoever is a Lewis and likes a Negroni, slash account must come on over. <laughs> All right, so we go for roughly equal parts. We get some sweet vermouth. And once again, we go for some nice gin. And then we go for a proper splash of Jägermeister. Yes. Always be generous, right? Good. So, oh no. Uh, one. How many Lewis are here? Only three? All right, good. Who loves a Negroni? So, yes, yes, seriously. Yes. Now we're talking. What's your name? Once again, Lewis? No. Ta Say again. 
Oscar, you're my friend for today. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, Oscar. I always felt like you know, everyone is like, you know, picking on me and just pretends to be a Lewis, right? And now there's an Oscar. Lovely. So the Oscar goes to, boom, my man. <laughs> That's perfect. So what we get here is a couple of not too clean glasses. Shit. Two, four, five. How many people are we? Five, right? Have we got one more glass? That would be nice. Perfect. That one is for me. Good. Lewis, 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 and Oscar. There you go. All right, good. So, as I said, you're going for your first big zip, and you're only looking out for sweetness and bitterness. And then, you're going to get like, you know, a nice squeeze of a lemon peel, right? You don't have to say anything just yet. Keep it in mind. And then you're going to get. Oh, yeah. Going to get a totally different drink. Perfect. So, come on over. Nice squeeze. It's just like, you know, some hysteric oils. Not a lot. There you go. And important is that you go, just like, you know, just concentrating on the bitterness and the sweetness, right? So if I ask you, is there a change, yes or no, don't tell me it's fresher, like, you know, you got some, you know, lemon flavor, obviously, yes. That's not the point. Still looking for sweetness and bitterness. But first of all, is there a change, yes or no? Yes. Say again? There's a big change. All right, good. That, that's nice. Love to hear that. So, what about the sweetness? How does it change? Is it reduced now or was it enhanced? You're very good. Seriously, in some areas, I almost get like, you know, this kind of, you're very good. So the sweetness is enhanced. Who agrees? Good. What about the bitterness? More round. I'm more enhanced, all right, good. That's, that's true as well. What about the bitterness? Is this less or less? less. It's different. What a beautiful word. I'm not interrupting you, just like that is so good. You're a good group, thank you. So what just happened? I'm going to describe it. Like, you know, if you don't agree, just tell me. But if you agree, just like I said, everyone knows what happened. So before, when you just like, you know, did this drink, roughly equal parts, like a classic aperitif drink, you had a very easy to identify gin, vermouth, jägermeister. There was a sweetness in the beginning, some like, you know, some herbal play, yes. And then there was like a lack in the middle. And then you had a peak of vermouth. Yeah. Right? It's like the warm wood bitterness, really like boom, splash, very prominent. Then what we did, we just had this kind of like a tiny game changer, just the lemon peel, right? And we squeezed it over the drink. And suddenly the sweetness, which was only like at the beginning before, is now continuously running, like from the beginning to the end, right? Like continuously. So it was like a foundation. That's the reason why you said more rounded. Everything is much more incorporated, right? And the most beautiful part, before the peak of the bitterness was really like, you know, smash. It was just like, boom, massive. And now, you said it's different. You said it's softer. And you're both right, because it is less 
as a peak, how you perceive it right now. Now is the bitterness starts in the beginning with this weakness. Yeah. And it runs continuously. It's like a big church bell when it goes like boom and you still hear it, right? Kind of like now, yeah. always going on and on and on. Beautiful, right? So it is just not an ingredient. It is, seriously, that is part of a recipe. It's not just like you know something fancy because you do it. You're changing something. And that shows the versatility. And actually, it showed that you are all very astute tasters already. Um, what we're talking about, like you know, in today's time, it always is here. Your brain, like you know, your eyes, is always like you know taking this far quicker into something like you now where you say, all right, good, I work with it, right? Because everyone is working every day, today's time, with a display. We are much more adept in working with impact, with perceived visually, than actually with anything else. And that's the reason why it's so difficult to actually taste spirits. And what you actually achieve, you're pretty good, when you see this, it's a lemon, right? You can see the drops. Do you see the drops? You can hear the drops, right? Look at it. So what happens with your mouth? Underneath your tongue. It's watering. Already, right? That is the strength of visual, right? That's what happened. And actually that shows that you're so adept in tasting because you haven't been fooled. All of you said, no, it's enhanced. The sweetness is enhanced. Usually, quite often, I fool like the most astute bartenders because they just see me, how I'm peeling a lemon. And everyone goes like, lemon equals acidity equals less sweetness, right? But you trusted your instinct. Perfect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make one more beautiful drink for everyone. And then we're just gonna have a good time. There's a Jägermeister room here with, I've been told, unlimited amount of Jägermeister. So I really trust you to finish it off. So I know it's pretty, it's kind of like now pretty like you know, um, ambitious to say, hey, I finished something off which is unlimited. Yeah, I know, but I'm trusting in you. Um, so the next drink, I, I do need some like you know, service. It's a very simple drink. And it's kind of like, now it is the most beautiful thing about recipes is when you can't reduce it anymore, right? When it's already like, you know, reduced in everything, right? The caramel is um, part of the recipe. And that is always like part in like, you know, the vermouth. And it's in the Jägermeister. So you kind of like, you know, um, rounding the edges. Yeah, but in this, uh, in this recipe, it is more from Sichuan farms than actually from the region of my day. But very good. Alright, good. So the recipe is pretty simple. It's only cold brew coffee. And then we're just going for, like, you know, some jigger. Roughly equal parts, and you're going to end up with something which is like the most tasty chocolate you ever had. So, how many people do we have here? Roughly. 40, all right, good. So we go for roughly 40 drinks, right? Perfect. Also entweder machen wir es mit was Tablet oder kommt jeder, aber wenn jeder kommt, haben wir mehr Ruhe. Ne? Ähm, aber wir können das hier schon anfangen, aufs Tablet zu machen. Ähm, 
vielleicht hilft uns auch Luis.
So everyone got his shot, right? Perfect. So um, basically, um, that was it. Um, Lewis, shut up. Oh, yes. So at least half of you now got to shut up, right? I figured that one out. Or I could say thank you um, for having me today. Um, what do you have to kind of like that? Just focus on when you have the shot. Obviously, enjoy it. Have a beautiful day here on the bar show. But um, one thing, just like watch out. For me, always the most amazing thing about this particular simple shot is it is refreshing, right? And usually, something with coffee would never be considered refreshing, right? And that is a refreshing shot. So thanks for having me. It was really beautiful. I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Cheers. Salud. Pleasure.